going to Mexico really was about how one's decisions in the past can really affect the present and the future. The way my grandmother's decision in the past completely changed my life. Let's roll. So we went and visited a mariposa reserve where we met Dr. Lopez, who's an amazing biologist who's been studying the adverse effects of U.S. industry on monarch butterflies and their migration back to Mexico. We're gonna find one of the most important butterfly colonies in Mexico. And uh, there's been various places in the reserve where the monarchs have formed colonies. What is it that the monarch butterflies do that assist the ecosystem either here or in the States? They're pollinators. And uh, I think of monarch butterflies as uh, indicators. Hmm. We have to see that. We have to acknowledge the fact that these insects are telling us something. Mm -hmm. If there's less butterflies, that means that we're doing something wrong. Yeah. These big logs. We're getting close. You said that about 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah. <laughs> There were some real moments in there that I don't think I'll ever forget. You just like take in the surrounding and you look around and you're like, this is real, you know? I don't have another word for that. There's one just kind of flying around, fluttering. It's a beautiful spectacle. Man. These forests are so specific that they have to be protected just like they are. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the microclimatic conditions are not going to be available for the butterflies. So this is why this is so important. Right. The whole area has to be protected. Mm -hmm. So at what rate are we kind of seeing the decline of the monarch species? It was species? very clear to see a decline since 2007. Mm -hmm. And it was right around the time where biofuels started to become a fad in the US. That is Decrease. like using corn. Right, like corn, ethanol. Ethanol, right, yes. Ethanol. Mm -hmm. Yes, so increase in biofuel production decrease in monarch numbers. Something that's very, very important to realize is that corn was domesticated in Mexico 10,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the oldest known place for corn. Here. And this is why this is so important because Mexican culture is completely tied with corn. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the varieties of corn that are found locally should be kept native. Maintained. And this is why it's so different from the United States, because mm -hmm. in the United States, it's only one variety <laughs> of corn yeah. that's been produced by large corporations right. that force the farmer to plant that exactly. seed. It's like we're, we're looking at the soil, we're looking at the environment as, a, as, a, as an industry. Mm -hmm. We're not considering it as a live organism. Right. 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 And right. something that's, that's very, smart. very difficult to understand is that a lot of the corn that is consumed in Mexico as tortillas, mm -hmm is brought in from the States. Really? Yes, a lot of it. Wow. So it's not because we can, we can produce enough corn here, it's because it's cheaper to buy it from the wow. States. Wow. All of the subsidies that are wow. in place for farmers. Make, make, make it cheaper mm, to make buy. Make it cheaper. So local farmers wow. in Mexico are put out are, of business. Yes, by big, big, big businesses in the US. So far away? Yeah. And it's for the, for the staple diet of Mexicans, which is tortillas. Wow. wow. So as humans, we have to stop this trend. Mm -hmm. We have to realize that our, our habits are changing the environment in a way mm -hmm. that this is a species that's indicating us mm -hmm. something. It's telling us something. Early warning stop. system. It's an early warning system. <laughs> stop. My father has always instilled a belief that if you focus and you work hard at something, that it is attainable. And that is one of the reasons why I think my dad is one of the most amazing people that I know. My brother is my best friend. Anything I've ever done growing up, I've always wanted to include him. We were raised that way. If I have it, I want him to have it, you know? So this experience is invaluable. That's why I feel like he needed to be there for both of us. Nick always, you know, idolized Miguel. And Miguel always, you know, that's his baby brother and he's got him under his wing always. With us, it's always been, we're opposite sides of the same coin. 
And we were kind of raised that way, to always have each other's <laughs> back, to always support each other. Only really yeah, sharp. almost. All right. Mm -hmm. Break time? Can we stop for a minute? Yeah. Sure. Up here. Oh, thank goodness for breaks. That's what happens when you're out of shape. I know I should have gotten a horse. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's amazing. So think about how these forests provide the conditions. They have to remain like this. Mm -hmm. They're so important. I mean, just... It's just the range is just here. It's, just, it's insane. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. It's just so easy for us to get really wrapped up in the speed of our own lives and just kind of write things off. When you're in the middle of it and you and you can kind of like really appreciate it with your own eyes, it's not like something that's just like distant and like, you know, it's like tangible. It's right there in front of you. It really touches you. just setting up and you can hear the butterflies in the distance. It's kind of like awe-inspiring because you're really in the midst of the sound of nature and it sounds really cliche, but you're like in the middle of it and it's hard not to feel inspired. Yeah. Okay, here we go. As far as performing in nature, I've never felt so in tune. Music has the ability to communicate ideas. It transcends language. And to be able to do that with people who you love, I don't know, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. You kind of like look over and I'm looking at my dad or my brother and I'm just like, wow, we're here in those moments. And it actually, it was really spiritual. Okay, my this is hurting. Good. It was so beautiful. I would definitely come back in a heartbeat. Bring my grandchildren back there. And we'll be like the butterflies migrating back, generation after generation. <laughs> Make me look good, son. Make me look good. <laughs>